All right, let's dive into the world of Denzel Washington thrillers. We're going to be looking at some of his most uh, intense and just captivating roles, really. We've got movie summaries, we've got reviews, but you know, this isn't just going to be about the plot points. We really want to figure out like what makes these thrillers so, so good and why Denzel just keeps us on the edge of our seats. Yeah, you know, thrillers, they just tap into something like so primal in us, right? That need to escape, that adrenaline rush. But then Denzel comes along and he brings something extra. He embodies these characters, makes them believable, even relatable. Yeah, totally. So let's start with Ricochet. It came out in 1991. So we've got Denzel. He's playing a district attorney. But here's the thing. He's also a former LAPD officer. And he's really trying to put all that like behind him. But John Lithgow, he's the villain. John Lithgow, he's pretty chilling in this movie. And he just won't let Denzel's character escape his past. Ricochet may not be his most uh, well-known film. But you can see the beginnings of what would make him a thriller icon. You know, mm. it's all there. The intensity, the determination, showing vulnerability, even in the face of danger. Mm -hmm. And you know what's kind of a fun fact about Ricochet? Mary Ellen Trainer, she's in it. Remember her from Die Hard? Oh, she God. played Gail Wallens. Oh, wow. A little movie wow. trivia for you. All right, let's jump ahead, like way ahead to 2012 to Safe House. This one was a box office smash, you know, and it paired Denzel with Ryan Reynolds, so you know it's going to be good. It's that classic action thriller, lots of explosions, lots of close calls. But Safe House really plays with what the audience is expecting. I mean, we're so used to seeing Denzel as the hero. But in Safe House, he's more morally ambiguous, more of a rogue CIA agent. Yeah, he's kind of playing against type. But he does it so well, and it leaves us wondering, like, can we actually trust this guy? What's he really up to? And that uncertainty keeps us glued to the screen. And Safe House shows us how much audiences love straightforward action, right? Mm. Sometimes you just crave that adrenaline rush. Oh, for sure. Now, let's switch gears. Completely different vibe. We're going to The Pelican Brief from 1993. This one's a legal thriller based on a John Grisham novel. Denzel plays a reporter who uncovers this huge conspiracy. This one really highlights uh, the director, Alan J. Pakula. He was a master of suspense, intrigue, you know, his films like All the President's Men and Clute, they all had that really smart edge of your seat quality. Yeah, and The Pelican Brief often gets kind of overlooked when people are talking about Denzel's best films, but it's a really great example of how he can shine even when he's not, you know, like kicking butt and taking names. Mm -hmm. His character, Gray Grantham, he's driven by this, this need to find the truth, even when it puts him in danger. The Pelican Brief shows us that thrillers can like take all these different forms. They can be grounded in real issues, like corruption, the power of the press, but still deliver those moments that get your heart racing. Absolutely. Okay, next up is Deja Vu. This one's from 2006, and it takes us into uh, the world science fiction. Denzel's character, he can travel back in time, and he's trying to stop this terrorist attack. It's a really wild ride. There's action, romance. It's mind-bending. Deja Vu makes us think about, like, what it would actually mean to change the past. Like, what would you give up to save lives? Mm -hmm. How would you handle knowing what's going to happen? Denzel does a great job showing that inner struggle. Yeah, and the setting of the film adds another layer. It takes place in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. And that devastation, that sense of loss, it really hangs over everything, even while Denzel's character is racing against time. Yeah, the film uses a real-world tragedy as a backdrop. It's saying, even with time travel, the human cost of disaster is always there. It is. And speaking of high stakes, let's talk about The Equalizer. In this one, Denzel is kind of a reluctant hero. He's a retired Special Forces operative who has to come out of retirement to, to fight injustice. You know, it's interesting to see Denzel on a franchise. He's known for picking diverse roles, often standalones, but he really connected with Robert McCall, this character, that quiet intensity, that unwavering moral compass. Yeah, and the first Equalizer came out in 2014, then the sequel in 2018. And get this, they were talking about a fourth film, even though Denzel said he was done with the character. I mean, the success of the Equalizer, it shows how fascinated we are with vigilante justice, right? Mm -hmm. That idea that one person can stand up against corruption and make things right. It is a classic power fantasy. But Denzel brings something different to the role. McCall's not a superhero. He's a man with a past. He has regrets, and he's trying to make up for them. That complexity makes The Equalizer more than just another action flick. We see the humanity beneath the violence, and that makes his story so much better. Yeah, exactly. Okay, now let's go to a film based on a true story. American Gangster from 2007. Denzel plays Frank Lucas. He was a real-life drug kingpin. He rose to power in Harlem in the 70s. American Gangster is a masterclass in like balancing charm and menace. Denzel makes 
Lucas complex, someone who's terrifying, but also charismatic in this weird way. The film shows us the world of organized crime, that ruthlessness and ambition that drive guys like Frank Lucas, yeah. but it also touches on bigger issues, you know, race, poverty, the war on drugs. American Gangster is more than just a crime thriller. It's a like a snapshot of a time in American history where the streets were full of opportunity and danger. And it reminds us that even people who do awful things, they're often products of their environment, shaped by forces beyond their control, you know? Yeah, totally. And speaking of exploring the dark side of humanity, let's talk about a movie that won Denzel his second Oscar, Training Day. His performance as Alonzo Harris, he's this corrupt narcotics detective. It is absolutely chilling. Training Day takes us into like the underbelly of the LAPD. Yeah. Right? It exposes the corruption and brutality that happens in the shadows. It does. And Ethan Hawke, his character, Jake Hoyt, he's like our moral compass in the film. He's this rookie cop. He's idealistic. He wants to make a difference. But Alonzo's methods really disillusion him quickly. And the tension between Denzel and Ethan Hawke? Wow. Alonzo pushes Jake to his limits, makes him question his values and make impossible choices. Oh, yeah. Training day is a powerful reminder. You know, power corrupts. And even the people who are supposed to uphold the law, they can fall to temptation. It's a film that stays with you. Yeah. You leave the theater and you're thinking about justice, what it costs to do the right thing, the complexities of like being human. Yeah, totally. And Training Day was the beginning of Denzel working with uh, director Antoine Fuqua. Yeah. They went on to make the Equalizer movies together. You can see that creative energy they had pushing each other to do amazing work. Now let's go to Man on Fire. It came out in 2004. This one shows Denzel's range as an action hero. He plays John Creasy. He's an ex-CIA operative battling his own demons, but then he finds this glimmer of hope. He gets hired to protect a young girl, Peta. She's played by Dakota Fanning. Oh, Man on Fire is a story about redemption, isn't it? Finding a reason to keep going, even when everything seems dark. And it explores this bond that can form between people from totally different worlds. Denzel's performance is so fierce, but also so tender. You really feel the depth of his emotion. Yeah, the movie builds slowly, you know. It establishes the connection between Creasy and Peta. They build this intimacy and trust. Yeah. Which makes it even more heartbreaking when she's betrayed. When Peta is kidnapped, oh man, Creasy just unleashes this fury. We haven't seen anything like this from him before. He is driven by vengeance, this need to bring the bad guys to justice. The action scenes in Man on Fire, they're brutal, intense. You can feel the raw emotion driving Creasy. It's such an exhilarating film, but also emotionally draining. It leaves you breathless, thinking about how far you would go to protect the people you love. Now, how about we go to Crimson Tide? Uh -huh. This one came out in 1995, and it's intense. Denzel stars with Gene Hackman. It's this claustrophobic thriller. They're stuck on a submarine, and there's a potential nuclear standoff with Russia. Yeah, you can feel the tension right from the start. That setting, being confined, the threat of like total destruction. It's just this atmosphere of unbearable suspense. And the performances are just wow. Mm. You've got Denzel as Lieutenant Commander Hunter. He's the voice of reason. And then Gene Hackman, he's Captain Ramsey. He's this seasoned commander, but he's getting paranoid. And they butt heads over what to do. And it raises these questions about duty, authority, what happens when you make a mistake with those kinds of stakes? Crimson Tide is a masterclass in building that tension, that suspense. And did you know Quentin Tarantino worked on the script? He wasn't credited, but he had a hand in it. No way. Really? Yeah. You can see his style, that sharp, witty dialogue. It cuts through the serious drama. <laughs> okay, let's move on to Inside Man, 2006. It's a really stylish heist thriller directed by Spike Lee. It's full of twists. You won't see the ending coming. This one proved that Spike Lee could make a mainstream hit. And he didn't have to compromise his vision. He brought his style to the genre, added social commentary, sharp wit. And the cast. Amazing. Denzel's the hostage negotiator. You've got Clive Owen as the bank robber. He's so cunning. And then there's Jodie Foster as this power broker. She has her own plans. Inside Man shows how Spike Lee could get all these talented people together. Yeah. And create something that's entertaining and makes you think. Yeah. The film keeps you guessing. You think you know what's happening. Mm. Then Spike Lee flips everything, leaves you wanting more. It proves that even in a familiar genre like heist movies, you can still find new ideas, fresh ways to look at things. You know, it's wild how Denzel just commands your attention, even in a movie with such a big cast, like Inside Man. Totally. Like he can just hold your attention even when he's not, you know, 
uh, the main focus. He's got this quiet magnetism, right? You just sense the intelligence, the depth. Yeah, absolutely. We've talked about a lot of different kinds of thrillers that Denzel's done, right? Big action movies, more suspenseful ones. But I've noticed this theme in a bunch of his roles. It's this idea of a man dealing with with his past. Oh, yeah, I see that. It's like he's always drawn to characters who are um, wrestling with their demons, trying for redemption or to make things right for past mistakes. Exactly. Like right. in Ricochet, his character, Nick Stiles, he's haunted by his time as a cop in L.A., wants to get away from it, but the violence keeps pulling him back in. It's that classic thriller thing, right? Sins of the past coming back to yeah. get you. But Denzel makes it feel, I don't know, more real. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then there's Deja Vu. Doug Carlin, he's literally going back and trying to change things. He gets the second chance to prevent a tragedy. But that comes with a lot of responsibility, you know? Knowing what could have been, it's got to yeah. weigh on you. The film does such a good job with the like the emotional side of time travel. It's not just, oh, how do I change this event? It's about the mental and emotional strain of that knowledge. And you can't forget about the setting, New Orleans after Katrina. That adds this whole other layer of tragedy. Yeah, even with something as crazy as time travel. The film is reminding us about the human cost of real disasters. It grounds it, yeah. And speaking of commentary on, on bigger issues, we have to talk about American Gangster. It's not just a crime movie. It's a look into the systems that allowed Frank Lucas to rise to power. Oh, for sure. You see the corruption, the poverty, the racial inequality. It was all fuel for the drug trade back then. And Denzel, as Lucas, he embodies that whole mix. The ambition, the ruthlessness, and even this, this twisted idea of social responsibility. It's incredible, right? He makes you understand Lucas's motivations. You can even feel a little sympathy for him at times. Yeah, you see how smart he is, how charismatic, mm -hmm. but also how that darkness took over. And then there's Training Day, which takes us right into police corruption. Alonzo Harris is just, it's a chilling portrayal of a cop who's completely crossed the line. Oh, absolutely. That performance is just captivating and terrifying at the same time. You yeah. see that charisma he uses to get what he wants. But underneath it, there's this this menace, this willingness to do anything to keep his power. And Ethan Hawke's character, Jay Coit, he's the audience's moral compass in this crazy world. Right, he's the idealistic rookie thrown into the deep end. And the tension between them, wow. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. You keep wondering, how far will Alonzo push him? Will Jake hold on to his values, or will he have to compromise to survive? Training day is a tough watch, but it's so powerful. It's a reminder that power can corrupt anyone, even those who are supposed to protect us. Denzel can play both sides of that coin so well, it's amazing. He can be the hero, but he can also play the villain the morally gray character. And he does both with such intensity. Man on Fire is a good example of that, right? John Creasy is this broken man haunted by his past, but he finds hope in protecting this little girl. And when that hope is taken away, it's like he explodes with this, this rage and grief. Yeah, the film shows us redemption, vengeance. But it also shows how powerful love can be, the lengths we go to for the people we care about. Denzel's performance is just raw, honest. You see his tenderness for Peta, then the rage, the sadness. The action in Man on Fire, it's brutal, but it fits. It's not just there for the sake of it, you know. It comes from Creasy's emotional state. And then we have Crimson Tide. Yeah. Where Denzel's character is the voice of reason in this this impossible situation. Oh, yeah, with a threat of nuclear war looming. Yeah. He's going up against Gene Hackman's character, who's losing it a little. That tension is thick. You can cut it with a knife. They're both so good, Denzel and Hackman. Most of the film is in this tiny submarine, but you can't look away. And the dialogue, so sharp, so clever. You can see Tarantino's touch there. And speaking of sharp dialogue, Inside Man is another one where Denzel just shines. Oh, yeah. He's the quick-witted hostage negotiator trying to outsmart Clive Owen's character. Spike Lee did such a good job with that movie. Inside Man is stylish, intelligent. Keeps you guessing the whole time. And Denzel's right at the center of it all. He brings this intelligence, but also a vulnerability. That's something I've noticed. He often plays characters who are underestimated. Yeah, they seem quiet, maybe unassuming. But they have this hidden strength, a mm -hmm. determination. We saw that in the Pelican Brief, too. Grey Grantham He's a reporter who stumbles onto something huge. He's not a fighter, not a spy, but he won't give up on the truth. Even when his life's on the line, it reminds you, you don't have to be a superhero to be brave. And then there's the equalizer, where Denzel is Robert McCall, this like modern day vigilante. He wants a quiet life, but he's called to action. It's a classic power fantasy. But Denzel keeps it real. 
you know, McCall has a past. He's not perfect. He's trying to do better. And the action is incredible. Denzel's not just a great actor. He's got the physicality, too. We've covered a lot of his thriller roles, but it's important to remember he's not just an action star, right? He can do it all. Drama, comedy. Definitely. He's taken risks, pushed himself. That's what makes him so good, so interesting to watch. He's not afraid to play flawed characters. And that's what makes them relatable. Yeah, we see ourselves in their struggles, their wins, their losses. Denzel has stayed on top for so long. He's a true icon. And speaking of iconic, we gotta go back to training day for a sec. That diner scene where Alonzo gives that King Kong speech. Oh man, that scene. Pure cinematic gold. It's Alonzo's arrogance, his swagger. Denzel just nails it. So intense, so charismatic. You love it and hate it at the same time. What's a scene people will be talking about forever? And that's what Denzel does so well. Mm -hmm. He creates characters that stick with you. And that's what this whole deep dive has been about. Why Denzel Washington thrillers are so good. From huge action movies to quieter character studies. He's a master of the genre, no doubt. He brings depth, intelligence, real emotion to every role. And that's why we keep coming back for more. We want to see what he does next, what character he brings to life. He's a legend. His legacy in this genre is set. Man, when you think about all the different characters Denzel's played in these thrillers, it's pretty amazing. Each one's so different, so memorable. And it's not just the characters themselves. It's how he how he becomes them. He just disappears into those roles. You know, you oh. see all their layers, the good, the bad. Okay, so just for fun, if you could pick one Denzel thriller character to be your friend, who would it be? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. So many to choose from. Part of me wants to say, like, Robert McCall from The Equalizer. <laughs> Imagine having someone like that on your side, always ready to help, always fighting for what's right. Oh, that'd be awesome. Just a quick call to McCall when you need help putting up shelves <gasps> or, or maybe dealing with a noisy neighbor. Right. But maybe someone a little less intense for, for daily life. Yeah. How about Gray Grantham from The Pelican Brief? He's got that reporter's curiosity, that drive to find the truth. Ooh, yeah. Unraveling conspiracies over coffee, that's a good time. You know, I have to admit, though, I'm kind of fascinated by Frank Lucas from American Gangster just to try and understand his mind, that ambition. Oh, yeah, there's a boldness to Lucas, a fearlessness. Probably best to admire that from afar, though. What about you? Who are you curious about? I think I'd go with John Creasy from Man on Fire. You know, underneath all that toughness, he's fiercely loyal, protective, plus he can handle anything. Creasy, he's an interesting choice. He shows that even broken people can find a way to heal, to protect others. This has been such a cool look into Denzel's thriller career. We've seen action, suspense, legal stuff, sci-fi, even a little history. What's the most impressive thing about his work in the genre to you? For me, it's how he balances intensity with vulnerability. His characters are strong, but they're also human. They mess up, they lose people, they have their demons. But they find a way through it. Yeah, I agree. It's that mix that makes his performances so good. We see ourselves in these characters, you know, their struggles, their wins. And that's what makes a thriller great. It's not just the action. It's the human story underneath it all. And Denzel Washington, he's a master at bringing those stories to life. So to everyone listening, as you go back and watch these films or maybe find some new ones, think about this. What is it about Denzel's characters that speaks to you? What makes his work in this genre so captivating, so timeless? Keep exploring. Keep talking about these movies. And most importantly, keep diving deep.